one. What's up, you two? It's Clarity here. Um, happy almost 2022. We're making it. Yay! Um, I would walk around, but my room is a disaster zone right now, and so is my bed. I thought I got through with all that. So, anyway. Um, I'm hoping to actually post this on YouTube. I've previously made videos, vlogs. Um, but I felt like I don't want to share those because some of them are at my low points. Um, but I will give you a general gist of the year so far, um, for those who are new to my channel. Um, hi, I'm Flaherty, also nicknamed Lady, Lady Lavender, 1211 at times, um, some social media stuff. I do have a Snapchat, I do have Facebook, I'm not gonna give you that one though. Um, and I do have a TikTok, I'm trying to see if I want to start recording on that or not. We'll see if I got free time. Um, I do a lot of vlogs, I talk a lot about personal issues, um, mental health issues, um, and all that just normal stuff. Um, but let me just give the gist of what's been going on this year. Um, this year alone, coming, well, following into last year, I've lost three animals, sadly, most of which are the ones you've seen on film. Um, Daisy, my mixed terrier, um, you saw sometimes coming into my room. She did pass away. Um, my other dog, Rose, who, uh, also passed away. And then my cat, my best buddy, my most photogenic buddy, loved to interrupt me at times. Dusty has unfortunately passed away as well. However, we've got some positives coming in. Um, I have a job as a teaching assistant at a lovely elementary school, and they're so supportive of my mental health, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, I, uh, we do have a new addition to our family. My mom might have brought in without letting my family know. We have a new puppy. Um, she's right now 13 or 14 weeks old. Um, getting close to being uh, six months. Uh, her name is Penny, and she's a Minpin Yorkie, um, and she is a fireball. <laughs> um, don't know if this microphone will pick up on her barking, but she's a loud barker. Um, so there's that. Um, one other bad news that did, is going on is that I don't have a car anymore. I had a car accident um, in November, and my car got totaled. Um, because of fire, the firewall got damaged badly, and I might have accidentally totaled the other lady's car. Um, I'm, it's fine. I'm fine. Nothing serious is happening. I just had a massive panic attack, though, um, which is something I want to bring up. That starting in November, yeah, it was actually the start of November. I think it was November 1st or, or the 3rd. Um, I started having more panic attacks more frequently than normal. Um, some of which were unprovoked. Um, uh, some of it was unmentioned triggers that I hadn't told staff about. Again, if you don't know me or haven't seen my videos, I'm someone that suffers with severe panic attacks and um, anxiety. Um, I tend to lean it more towards a panic disorder. Um, because sometimes the attacks do happen at random for no apparent reason. Um, uh, I've been diagnosed with this uh, since I was a child, and I am medicated, and I uh, have developed techniques, which if, you, if you're suffering with this through this as well, I will be happy to share with you. I've also been diagnosed with ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, um, again, since I was a kid. And I do still suffer with it to this day, um, but I've gotten better with it. Um, but recently, back in November of 2021, or this year, I guess I should say, um, starting in there, I noticed my anxiety attacks were getting progressively worse um, to the point where I kept logs about them and how long they've lasted and the recovery period. Um, 
the recovery periods varied and also I do recall exactly at one time I had six or so attacks in a row two of which were massive to the point where my body looked like I was possessed and being exercised out of my body my arch my back just super tensed um and yelling in pain yelling I can't breathe um and I want to bring up more awareness about this um to people who might not think this is actually something that can be serious first of all it is um but afterwards I we dis- we discussed that my medicine needed to be increased because I was getting older and so my body must have gotten used to the current um, dosage of my anxiety medication and so it needed to go up a little bit more uh, which it did and they also gave me and prescribed me a, a generic Xanax a benzodiazepine to if I feel an attack coming, I can take it ahead of time, and it will calm myself down. Um, even if I did have an attack, I would take this as well as a muscle relaxer because this will tend to hurt the next day, and I don't want that. Um, it's not fun, and it can last for quite a while. Um, uh, I'm much better, though, uh, which is good. And the school I'm working at has worked with me about all this and I actually explained more about it to them and the principal is so nice um, and I'm now going to be having an ADA uh, which is Americans with Disability Act um, set into play for accommodating if any attacks in the future do happen where I can keep my headphones because these are actually one of my panic attack preventers um, I would have a uh, I have places to go if I need to calm down or it's silent and quiet. Um, I have my medication with me. I have in my bag um, stress relievers. I've got people I can give signals to like, hey, attack, attack. Um, I let them know what trigger words. I let them know... um, uh, just all that generic stuff, which I'll get more in touch with, um, because it's important to bring up, and I feel like it's something that a lot of people talk about. Um, so, and we've already got everything, and I can have some time off, and if I feel like I'm not able to come back, or return to work, I can take a half day off, which will count as part of my sick day, um, so that way my hours I work with kids, doesn't get affected and I will have some I miss because that's happened before during that period. Might you add I'm still new to this whole thing so I didn't know about that but now I understand. Um, so this is going to be probably a long video. If there's something you want to skip feel free. I don't mind. Um, if you made it this far thank you. Um, happy holidays everybody as well and again stay safe out there. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's, let's, let me start talking about this mental thing I wanted to talk about. So, like I said, I am somebody who's been diagnosed with ADD and in panic disorder or severe anxiety and panic attacks, as my doctor would quote it. Um, this started, like, when I was a child, um, most of the, main reason we got it diagnosed is because I would refuse to go into a classroom because I was afraid that I always kept thinking something would happen to my family like something bad would happen to my family um I was sh- sh- kind of shy I I don't know there was that irrational fear in my head like something bad was gonna happen if I went in um this went on from kindergarten up until a little bit into third grade or so um, but the odd thing is which I'll cover more into is that it's kind of foggy in my head but after being diagnosed with this and given medication um, 
right as I went into fourth grade, I went in proud and strong and didn't have an attack. Same, I think, maybe went to fifth grade, although I might have had a couple. I don't recall. Um, but my anxiety did improve. Um, and I was able to develop coping skills, um, you know, in the beginning. I mean, especially when I got into, like, I think high school or so, partway through, I developed wanting to have headphones or earbuds um, to help. Um, but... <sighs> having this kind of anxiety does in fact take a toll on you. I don't care if you don't believe me that this isn't something that can be debilitating. More than like 30 million people in the world have anxiety to a point where you can have panic attacks. Um, I am one of them. Um, but I'm also one of the lucky few that's able to use medication as well as do CBT which is cognitive, um, oh god, behavior, was it cognitive behavioral treatment? Um, on my own, which is where I've identified the triggers, I, um, work ways around it, or work my way of bringing myself back down to normal, um, develop breathing techniques, I've, um, try to conquer some of those uh, triggers. Like the fear of anything bad happening in my family, I will know and say, hey, it's fine. There's nothing wrong. If something did happen, they would let you know immediately. Um, and that everything will be fine. You know that. Um, that it's okay, you're going to be shy. Just be open then. Just not too open, but just be open um, to explaining things. Um, uh, try to work on looking in eye-to-eye eye contact, which is something that is a symptom of someone with ang pretty bad anxiety, is we tend to avoid looking at eye contact, which, like me here, is I'm not really looking at the camera. I'm looking at the screen that's showing me instead of this camera right here. Um, I just, it's something I'm working on. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's just that irrational fear of looking somebody in the eye. Um, I'm getting better. Um, so, especially with my job I'm in now, because uh, I do sometimes have that social anxiety. I don't like crowded places. I don't like where there's a ton of people around me, because um, that can set me off, especially if it's on a day that I didn't have my medicine. This happened one time when I was visiting my dad in Louisiana. I just broke down, uh, even with my headphones on. I had to sit by my common thing I had to sit by my mom because she knows my signs and my symptoms um, when an attack is coming um, and she knows all my tricks because when you're in that attack moment you're just gone especially for me um, so with my job as it is now I thinking that might have just set my attacks off and all the stress. Stress is not good for someone with anxiety. Um, in fact, it can enhance anxiety, which can also enhance my hypothyroidism, which again can enhance my anxiety um, and all that, but especially also my lack of sleep at the time. I was not getting great sleep. Um, it's better now, especially with my long hours. I do tend to sleep easily at night, but yeah. Anyway, but back on to here, um, anxiety, it can be serious. So what is anxiety? Anxiety is basically somewhere in your mind, part of the mind that controls fear response, um, sends a signal to my brain and my nervous system that, hey, something is scaring this per her, something is freaking her out, there's a threat, a threat is there. Um, we need to send adrenaline in. So that certain system, that certain spark travels through my nervous system towards my heart, which then sends a signal to it saying, hey, start speeding up, you know, because you're in a serious threatening situation. 
So your heart needs to be faster and your breathing needs to be faster to get away from said fear. Um, and then it'll give it something to help it calm it down. I can't say the word. It starts with an A, a symbol, I think. Um, then afterwards to calm it back down. Um, but when that happens, there's a thing of, oh no, I might have another attack. I'm going to freak myself out, which will start the whole system over again. Um, it's not fun especially the after effects because it leaves you so drained of energy um so especially because for me i'm suffering with not just anxiety i also have add which also uses up my mental energy along with anxiety um leaving me completely and utterly drained and incapable of speaking which i'll get more into that a little bit later um but along with it is the, my fears tend to resurface along with negative thoughts if possible. But luckily at this time, my negative thoughts have gone away kind of. <sighs> um, Sorry, it was my sister talking, so I didn't want to hear this. Um, uh, the, um, oh god, my train of thought just disappeared. It, see, here's the thing, I don't like when people say, oh, it's not really an issue, it's not something to be worried about, I didn't have this. That's fine. Some people only have it once. We'll have only one panic attack. Unlike some of us, like me, we have multiple. And it stinks. Because it does interfere with our normal daily lives. It makes us fearful of things. It makes us fear doing anything because we have a feeling that we'll have an attack come in and we cannot be prepared. Um, which is, in this situation gotten better because I was prescribed a benzodiazepine that I could take with me um, anywhere and ingest if I feel an attack coming. Now there is being scared of something and then there's attacks. Um, when I'm scared of something I'll just go, ah, it's fine. Heart rate goes up, that's fine. An attack is I will have certain signs I'm having an attack. Um, small ones, I will feel my fingers twitch. Um, my pulse will start racing, my face will start feeling red, um, I'll feel a buzzing sensation up here, um, and all, and my, especially though if it's a severe attack, I will be tensing, and like this, see that's the tensing sign, and, uh, my art, my back will arch, and I will start to wheeze. And this also happened when I had my car accident. I was going through this and the person who was coming in to help me, I feel like they thought I was having a heart attack, which is what some people will feel like it's going to be. I will feel like my mind saying, oh, you're having a heart attack. But in actuality, I'm not. I'm just struggling to get air in and the oxygen in at a nice pace to the point where my body will calm down and release the tension in my body. Um, and it's definitely not fun up here. The chest pains are the worst because you're using those tense muscles. Um, that's your body's reaction to tighten up. Um, uh, and it was especially bad when I had to be sent in an ambulance, which again, like I said, I was fine. I was just suffering through severe attacks um, to the point where the ENT was asking my mother, has she had panic attacks so bad that to the point where she passed out? And frankly, no. I never had a panic attack so bad that I passed out. I will look like I probably look like I'm passed out. I will be just like, but I'm still conscious. I'm just tired, 
and my body is just giving up to the point where it doesn't want to do any more attacks and it doesn't want to be tightened anymore but no I've never passed out I'm very conscious although I will say that my brain does get foggy because the rapid intake of oxygen is going to my brain I and also just lack of energy I get tired I can't recall things um, that happen specifically it's not great if you're trying to give a report. Um, but never do pass out. Sorry, I need to eat something. It's like 11.30 at night and I need my applesauce. Um, so, it's this is something severe. Again, just want to reiterate to the people who don't believe this is actually an issue. That it's not really a disorder. It is. It is more neurological. It's just something up here. It's just my mind enhancing my fears, um, my uh, uh, fear response um, tenfold, basically. Um, panic attack disorder, though, is more unconsciously. So I have these two types of attacks. Voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary is something I know is going to trigger me that I will unintentionally do, which will set me off. It's like something I know for a fact is a trigger. Um, like uh, stress, putting too much on my shoulders is a, tr is a trigger. Um, confrontation, I know it's a trigger and all that. Um, but then there's involuntary, which I have gone through. Uh, it is out of my control, uh, especially if, like, I'm switching medication for my anxiety and I'm going through a um, detox and then being introduced to new medication. That was bad because I do have bad panic attacks because it was out of my control and I didn't know that was a trigger. And I wasn't prepared, so it's involuntary. It just suddenly happens. Which happened at one of my other part-time jobs. I even had to be sitting in the hospital, an ambulance and have my mom come and pick me up from work and take me home. And I haven't even I haven't even clocked in yet, and I had those attacks. I hope I didn't freak the guy out who helped me, though. Whoever he was, I can't remember your name, but thank you for keeping me company on the floor, as well as my manager who helped me. Thank you as well for keeping me on the floor. And helping me and helping me talk to my mom and communicate what was going on. Um, those attacks are the most frightening because they can happen anywhere and out of nowhere at all. Which was what was happening. I was having. And the constant thing I keep saying in my head is make it stop. Make this stop. Um, talking about the attacks or especially the bad ones is hard sorry um, and kind of a trigger because some of them are pretty heavy um, because in my head I'm thinking oh it's over the stupidest things it's not it's just a normal fear reaction I got I'm putting my own mind down about my fear. Um, so that's kind of what's going on in my mind is the constant fear of this happening again and again and again and I can't do anything about it. Which is something you don't need to be thinking of. If you are thinking that, you're making it worse. That's why I have things to help me calm down mentally. But I'll probably get that into another video because this is already like 24 minutes long and I'm tired. So until next time, this is Flirty signing out. Bye!